Would y'all believe that all of these vehicles, with the exception of mine, all belong to the same person? Well, the two GMCs. <laughs> Wait a minute. I wouldn't be caught. Hold on. Five of these trucks are yours, right? Yeah. All the Fords. The two <laughs> GMCs are not Yeah, when I pulled up, I thought this was a, uh, was a, a used truck car lot. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the World's Worst Fishing. Thanks so much for being here. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. Now, today is a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time, and it kind of took one of my friends taking up the bait making hobby for me to do it. And, you know, one of the things that I really try to do on this channel is to make saw plastic lure making, you know, simplified and relatable uh, for people who might want to start to give them the confidence and the information that they need. And so what I've always wanted to do is to do a true beginner's guide where we set up a, a new beginner's shop, bare bones equipment, bare bones setup, and show you how successful you can be. Now we can do it. I, I can't really do that in my shop because it's so established. There's so much stuff in there. There's so much history of bait making, but this is going to be on another level of beginner's guides. I'm super happy and it happens to be Happy Jack. Okay, so this is the fish cave for today's video and you'll notice a few things that are different. Uh, he put the microwave on the left side. It's supposed to go on the right side. So mistake number one. Mis right? Mistake, left mistake number two is he didn't buy worm oil. So he has this to lubricate the injectors. So um, I don't recommend that for most beginners. We're totally kidding. Get what? that out of here. What? Well, Cut. Figured. Cut. All right. So all jokes aside, this is what a lot of people's setups when they first begin look like. So my very first, the, the very first time I ever made baits, my setup was actually, oh, there goes the sunlight. My, my setup was actually probably half of this, even more bare bones than this. And I was making baits my very first day. Now, now they were completely ugly, but the point is you can have a lot of success. And so what, what I've done is I've kind of provided him with some supplies he set up you know the table he got the cups he got you know gloves things like that the microwave i have provided him with some plastic a couple molds on loan some injectors because i'm a great friend hey, right uh, yeah that's that's when you say yes chris no i'm just disagreeing with on loan. oh they're not on loan you're going to keep them okay so i'm not getting these back right yeah. so basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go through the process of making baits here in what is essentially a very very simple setup which is how a lot of you at home would start you know again there's no beginning that's too humble my i, I wish i had a picture of my first little bait table it was absolutely it was absolutely pathetic you're already off to a much better start. All right, so I'm actually going to let Happy Jack tell y'all a little bit about how much it costs him to get set up. And this is really important. You know, me and my shop just kind of telling y'all how much stuff costs is a little different than somebody who just did it and is just getting started. You know, they're the ones who are, you know, trying to do this on a budget. And so I think it'll help to get his perspective. So tell us a little bit about kind of what you've got going on here because this is this is the exact same way that everyone's going to kind of start so like chris said i mean when you start out with this i mean realistically i think you did a video on it and said how to get started with like 500 dollars or less yeah so i and this is terrible and i haven't told it, chris it this. goes up from there and after it, that 500 it yeah. goes way up but i'm bad about because i haven't really been interested in the bait making process of it and what you and i've been friends for 10 years now yeah and i've been around it for 10 years and so i've always been more about let me see how many baits i can get from him but now he's gone a different direction he likes to swim baits but i still like the stuff that i think will catch fish hey hey, hey i like it all okay and so i don't discriminate so the kind of the way i wanted to get into this is because i enjoy making you know like your crawls your worms your stuff that when you look at it, you're like, that's going to catch a bass right there. And we live in Florida. And a lot of these fish down here, just that's what they eat. So, so anyway, tell us a little bit about so, your initial investment. So my initial investment, <clears throat> I went to Walmart. You got to go to Walmart. Right. If you want to bargain, go to Walmart. <laughs> I think this microwave was like $63 after tax. Now it looks like something that would come out of an airplane. I was going to say, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those little like hotel you know, microwaves. Well, in my defense, I tried to go... I went to Walmart, I went to go buy 
an actual big, you know, regular right. size micro. And would you guess they were all sold out? So this is what I ended up. You with. know, I probably have an extra, just you know, microwave in case but, you but need you one. But you wouldn't let me borrow it. So. Right, right, of course. I bought the microwave, so we're at like sixty-three dollars there, something like that. Right. I went to Dollar General because I live on Highway Twenty. So anybody local to Tallahassee knows about Highway Twenty. We're not high budget, so I went to Dollar General, which is our Publix. Oh I yeah. I bought my knives. Amen. These were a dollar. Stirring knives. Yeah. They look like they were a dollar's worth. I bought my Pyrex there, and basically everything I got. Well, don't forget uh, also, you know, heat gloves. Yes, yeah, so and so, you can't get those at Dollar General. So that was from Home Depot. Right. And the table was from Home Depot, and I think the table's like fifty-five dollars. Right. So, so all in all, would you say that you're up to maybe two hundred dollars? Yes. Without actual like colors glitter plastic and exactly. things like that which i've kind of brought for him today to get him off you know the ground so to speak but you know just to get a bare bones setup and just to be able to say that you have the now the space that that you need to do this you know it doesn't take that much and really your main your main costs are going to be investing in molds and plastic you know because plastic is non-renewable once you use it it's gone you can remelt it to an extent but once you buy a mold you have it forever so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this brand new limited shop and show you what we can do with it right here on day one all right so i graciously provided happy jack one gallon of dead on plastic swim bait blend and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of hang back and kind of coach him along uh, now he has made baits before it's it's not like this is his first time encountering any you know all of the materials all together but it's the first time he's doing it in his own environment here yeah all by all by his lonesome even though i'm here so uh go ahead measure out how much plastic you want open it up that is already pre-mixed normally you would kind of want to rock your um this is something that i'm Rock your jug, right? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you have to mix the resin and see. You learn. Why? Yeah. Why don't you just fill it up to the two cups? Or how many? How many worms do you want here? All of them. All of them. All the worms. All right. So that right there is the first cup of plastic ever going in the microwave in this shop. And so what I think we're gonna do is I also brought him some flakes. So we have some of these dead on flakes here, Barney and turquoise. And I think we're gonna make sort of like a take on the color red bug um with some mf color so uh we don't know how this microwave cooks you know one important thing to learn is how your microwave cooks your plastic you know something like this this is the two cup size a medium durometer plastic you know this may take four and a half minutes maybe even five minutes in a small microwave like this uh that's going to be relatively low wattage so this is going to be an experiment and this is one thing that you'll have to learn as a beginner go ahead and fire it up all right, take it out. Let's see how well it's cooked. Make sure your gloves on. Okay, so as we can see, this plastic has barely even started gel phase. I don't even know if you can stir that yet. Yeah, it's like so you. right, so yeah, that right there is like jelly. So what that tells me is this is you know obviously a pretty low watt microwave, and that was four minutes. So these are all things that you'll kind of have to. Um, oh yeah, that's nothing. These are all kind of things that you'll have to figure out. So let's go ahead and try like another two minutes on that and see if we can get the plastic through gel phase. Okay, so that right there is looking a lot better. You can see that this is mostly uh, cooked throughout gel phase. So as a beginner, one thing you really want to pay attention to is temperature, okay? So that right there has a surface temperature of 338, 339 degrees. Now that's just a surface temperature. Most of the time, the plastic that still needs to be cooked and completely convert it over through gel phase is towards the bottom of the cup. So one thing that Happy Jack's gonna want to remember to do is to really stir up the bottom contents of that cup. And now we wanna recook for about 30 to 45 seconds, depending on your microwave. So we're gonna do that, and then this plastic should be ready. Oh, there's Thelma, got you. All right, go ahead and add that beautiful color. This is MF Strawberry. Now, I've watched a lot of Chris's videos. No, you I haven't. I think from what I remember, you want to do like 300 drops. 300 drops? Let's see? Have I not even opened that? Yeah, not see? Uh-huh. Got, you got to be prepared. All right, honestly, I would just squeeze some in there. Just just well, go I've, for it. I've literally never counted, so. Yeah, no. All right, stop. Whew, that was close. It's close. That was close. It's like a beautiful blood red. That is MF Strawberry, a oh, good one. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna add some of that Barney Flake, some dead-on flakes. 
He's, he has his little smidge spoon there. That's the most important measurement in bait making. And he's gonna go ahead and add it in. Oh my God, dude. That's beautiful. Now smidge to me. You is... are so advanced at this already. Yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> there you go, clean off the spoon. You don't, you don't wanna mix flakes. Yeah. I'd get a little more green. Let's, let's do a little more green. Perfect. Oh, well, you can't go wrong with that. No, he 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 will literally put every flake that exists in the same cup of plastic. So yeah, I mean here here it is, dude. This is this is already the first color. And sorry that the lighting might be a little challenging here today, guys. We're kind of up under this roof here, and uh, there's just kind of a lot of glare and, and shade. So we it, will, we will get it set up for filming a little bit better in the future. I like it, buddy. All right, I think the moment is here. I think the plastic is ready. What we did is uh, after we cooked up that color, we just kind of threw it back in for another 30, 40 seconds. And I think it is time. Yeah. It is time, yep, give that a little bit of a stirring. Ugh, it keeps going uh, out of focus on me. All right, time to inject some baits. All right, so he's being smart. He has both gloves on. He has a six ounce injector, which will fill these two molds. Again, this is the Angling AI seven and a quarter inch, I think it is. This seven is the, this is the eight, yeah, seven yeah, yeah, seven and a quarter. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Very first baits in the new shop. I'm excited for you, buddy. I have not been part of a new bait setup, bait shop setup since I did it. <laughs> it's been a long time now for me. Oh, there's the magic happening. And again, most of the time you'll need clamps. Whenever you get new molds, they usually have, uh, you know, bolts and nuts to close them up. But a lot of times we... Um, I remember that now, the old school mm -hmm, ones that we used mm -hmm. bolts. Yeah, well, I mean, they all have bolts, so I just take them out oh, you did. Okay. so that we can clamp. All right, it's that time. We don't have drumsticks, uh, so no drum roll, unfortunately. I'm oh, do a drum roll. Do a drum roll. That is that is horrible. See, there you oh go. my god. That I didn't say I played the drums. That just put a curse on this whole situation here. Let's see, did I do it right? But did he do it right? Oh my god, he did! <laughs> hey, first ever baits, dude. There you go. Huh? Ha ha! Don't stick. There you go. There it is. There there it is. Alright, here. Let me uh let me pop open this mold. If I can uh, get it. Yeah. Look at that, y'all. AR goodness. There it is. Sort of a cherry red bug with blue, purple, and green flake. Which, that right there will forever now be known as the Happy Jack color. Hey. Dude, first first baits. That's right. In your new bait shop, which is just nothing more than a picnic table. No. It's, it's wonderful. You don't have to have half your garage renovated and built out to do this stuff. All right, I'm, I'm going to get a crack at this, see if I can make something in the Happy Jack shop. Here we go. See if I can do it. It's been a day since I've done this. <laughs> you hear popping on the roof. Yeah, there's a, there's a cat on the roof. So apparently, uh, Happy Jack here is already better at this than I am. This, this is my run, okay? That one, that one came out pretty good. I flashed the heck out of that one. Yeah, it just shows that even experience like me doesn't mean that you're any good at this. So that right there can go essentially in a, in a remelt cup. Um, but these right here turned out. And uh, here's, some, here's something that Avery just did here. He made little hangers up here <laughs> to hang his baits. Hang, hang them sprues, man. Redneck ingenuity. That's right. The next time I come over here, he will already be an addict, and you will see baits hanging by runners up under this hole. It's going to be everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. It's yeah, it's going to be like Christmas lights up oh, under yeah. here with baits. Can't afford Christmas lights. So now that we've done a little bit of actual bait making, uh, I just kind of want to give one more quick rundown of the setup here, just to kind of show you, you know, how minimal it can be, and you can still have success. I mean, we have. I mean, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six six color pigments or sorry no that's seven i can't count right no that's six wow six pigments a couple of powders 
several more flakes that's only two of them right there but just that right there gives him literally hundreds of color combinations that he can use just single injection you know we haven't even gotten into laminates yet you know i'm just kind of we're going to start slow here but you know he has a couple of molds this right here is the four inch ai bloodline mold right he also has a do it ripper you know and the do it molds are real popular with beginners because of the cost savings you know you're, you're going to get a little less performance out of those from a bait making standpoint but it makes an awesome bait you know has a little place to put them of course can hang them up on his ceiling if he wants but you know this is it just a table a few pigments a few flakes you know again your main cost is going to be you know your initial overhead you know like, like we were saying earlier only about 200 and then the rest has to go into the guts of the bait making the plastic the molds colors etc and really your molds and your plastic are your main i guess uh expense but there it is you know that right there is minimal and that's kind of what i wanted to show today was you know not only just helping a buddy get set up but also take y'all along just to show how simple and, and, and easy it is to get into the hobby that right there was nothing i mean that that was 30 minutes of total setup time from when he bought the microwave set up the table and that's it we already have beautiful worms that we could fish with today all right dude what do you think was that was that not fun i had a blast finally doing it here on your own got your own setup you're off the ground yeah and it, it changes the game when you're doing it on your own look at look at this horrible mountain it's like perfectly centered you yeah, know that, I mean, it, what what even is that is that a gazelle is that what they call it? no that's a uh, that's a cantaloupe an antelope I, <laughs> no. I don't know what it is well it it came from it's a hand-me-down yeah it's a piece hand me down of, piece of and taxidermy. i actually got, it was nice when i got it but uh the previous owner um had cats so that's all i'll say about it so yeah. it went outside cats ruin most and things. now it's probably about to go in the fire but so but back, yes yeah it, i mean back back to the bait making this took not a lot of money and effort mm -hmm. to set up you know obviously you know i was able to bring over some things that you needed but you but you know you can once you get those things you can see how easy it is to just get up off the ground and, and start running with it you you need nothing more than just one afternoon exactly and a table that's right so i mean it's it's really very basic that's what's so great about this hobby is how approachable it is obviously you can take things to the extreme and you know and and get into some more complicated things which take a lot of practice but just getting good successful fish catching baits does not take a lot of practice you just right. you just have to have the tools and the basic knowledge to get started and that's what i hope this video shed a little bit more light on so there it is the happy jack bait making station it doesn't take more than that and now we're going to go try to catch a fish all right well we figured we'd end this video with a little bit of bonus fishing footage however we're not even throwing the worms that we made because i don't even think he brought them but we right now is a, a big kind of shad time of year so we knew that we'd be out here throwing moving baits like spinners and swim baits i've got an alabama rig hopefully we can get one on we just located a school of small fish like this so maybe we'll get a few more but I wanted to end the video on a high note all right surprise a little bit of bonus baits right here at the end of this video However, got to wait for the laundry noise to cut off. Y'all know me, can't stand it. We just poured a shad pattern that might just be one of the best we've ever come up with. And uh, if it turns out good, I'll kind of tell you how we did it. Oh yes, there it is y'all, look at that. Look at this shad goodness. Let me uh, go ahead and just pick one up so that you can see it, see the effects of the pearls while it's kind of moving right so what you'll notice is that we really really are playing on the highlight right so the vein on this one you can see that blue vein how it pops that's like a ton of blue highlight powder a little bit of blue powder just by itself the belly is also blue so one trick that you can use in your hand pours is to match the color of the vein to a highlight color in the belly. So blue highlight in the belly, but a lot less of it, fading into that much more pronounced blue highlight vein. And then the top is basically like a scuppernog brown with a bunch of green highlight. Absolutely stunning. Here we go. We made like a little display so that you can see them from different angles, right? 
you can see some of the the highlights and just the effect from different angles i like this one right here that's upside down yeah beautiful shad color absolutely one of my favorites that i've done definitely look for a lot of these to be in my rotation on instagram which is where i sell my plastics yeah i think we're going to start doing ha <laughs> you can see i spilled some highlight on that one you uh yeah uh, like i was saying we're definitely going to be going to be adding this one to the lineup that is absolutely amazing glad it worked out um i don't i don't use a ton of highlight in my bloodlines uh but i think we will going forward all right, everybody, we are back home and uh, just wanted to say thanks again for tuning into this video today. Uh, I hope y'all found it uh, enjoyable and uh, maybe a little bit helpful in, in terms of giving you the confidence that you can start this hobby. You know, you don't have to have a full garage build out or, you know, massive renovations or anything. I started with just a little plastic picnic table, uh, just like um, just like you just saw over at at uh, Avery's house and it's really all it takes you know it just takes that that first little dive right and then you can get into it and you can go from there you know you can at least find out if you like doing this and then from there you can you know just keep going and going and going if you want to um, you know if you don't like the hobby you know you're not out a ton of money and a ton of time so that was kind of the point of today's video was to give you all a little inspiration from a humble beginning standpoint which is where we all started and uh, I hope you all enjoyed.